Since the beginning of our lectures, we have talked about songs. And songs, therefore, have been in existence since the medieval period. But it isn't until the classic and then the full-blown romantic period that art songs become so much more mature. There's so much, there's a, such a wealth of poetic uh, writing going on during the classic and romantic period that it influences the composers a great deal. So we're now going to talk about the German tradition of art song. A German song is called a Lied. If you're talking about a plural form, then it's Lieder. And these Lieder offer word painting at its best, where the piano and the vocal lines can bring the text to life in a very easy, very well-conditioned manner. So I want you to think of this music as not just a solo for the voice, but it really is a duet, a partnership between the solo voice and the piano. There are two different styles or two different forms that art songs come in. The two musical forms are either strophic or through composed. Strophic form is verse-like or hymn-like. You all probably have heard the song Amazing Grace before. Amazing Grace has many different verses, but we sing the same music to each verse. That's called strophic. And the poets of the time, especially Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Goethe loved the strophic form of creating songs because he always wanted his text to be the most important thing. But for us in a music appreciation setting, we're more interested in the other form, the through composed form, where it's new music from beginning to end. Maybe there's a small section that's repeated, but it's just a small little part and it keeps growing and being new and different all the way to the bitter end of the song. So these are the two forms that art song come in, strophic and through composed. Our first composer in the field of German leader is Franz Schubert. Schubert was the most important composer or contemporary composer alive during Beethoven's life. Schubert was born in 1797, five years after Beethoven moves to Vienna, and he passes away in 1828, the year after Mozart, uh, year after Beethoven passes away. So Schubert, again, another very tragic short life, but he amasses such a huge catalog of music. And one of the reasons for this is the way he grew up. Schubert was born in the city of Liechtenthal, and his father was the headmaster of a school there. Schubert started to display such great gifts in the field of music, and the father knew that he just didn't have a very good music program at his school. So he sent Schubert to Vienna, where he studies at the Antonio Salieri School of Music. Again, Salieri's name comes about. Salieri, the guy who is painted as Mozart's great detractor. So from Salieri, what is Schubert learning? Schubert is learning the classic style of composition, the sonata cycle. And we see a lot of classic influence, especially in the instrumental compositions by Schubert. But where Schubert is full-blown romantic as in his art song. So Schubert is allowed to live in Vienna, again the Enlightenment, a time when uh, artists can join together in coffee houses or taverns and talk about what they're working on and share their gifts and share their ideas. Many times Schubert had friends who were poets, had finished off uh, several poems that they had been working on and they knew where Schubert would be. So they would rush their work to him and they would go off to the corner of the coffee house to the piano. And this is what they did for their, um, to pass time, is create songs. Schubert was known as this great uh, master composer for the songs and he composed more than 600 of them during his short life. Two of his towering masterpieces come during his teenage years, Gretchen am Spinnerade which is uh, talking about Gretchen at the spinning wheel. She's just had a, a wonderful date and she's remembering that date and the piano part is the whirling of the spinning wheel and it kind of goes uh, along with uh, Gretchen's psyche as she goes through it. So it's great word painting in it. 
that particular song is on your listening list. <clears throat> and then the most important song that Schubert composes is the Earl King, another through composed song that offers a lot of uh, interest for the vocalist and the pianist as well. I'll talk about the Earl King more in just a few minutes. Schubert, since he possessed such a great singing voice as well, started to make money for himself by performing Schubertiads. You could hire Schubert to come into your house and if you were entertaining family or guests, then he would sing for your guests after the dinner in your parlor. And maybe he would bring along some other singers as well. Later on, after the passing of Schubert and other composers started to create more and more um, big catalogs of leader, this was then uh, to become a leader obent, where people would be hired to come into your home and sing German art song, maybe not just of Schubert, but of a lot of the different German composers. Well, unfortunately, Schubert does uh, die very early in his lifetime but he leaves with us uh, such a wonderful catalog. Several different symphonies, um, eight operas, seven masses, the seven masses. Uh, many of those have been uh, recorded and performed by the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra and uh, chorus. Twelve string quartets, fifteen piano sonatas, eight and a half symphonies. One of the symphonies is unfinished, uh, but over 600 liter. Let's go back to the Earl King. The Earl King poses a big problem for the vocalist. Within the story, there's a narrator, a father, a son, and this spectral figure called the Earl King. Remember that, I think I mentioned this with Dido and Aeneas, that in European literature, they think of death as a persona, something that actually comes for you. Well, the Earl King is one of those. And so the Earl King is trying to gently lure this son away and bring him into death. The son is very sick, and so he's hallucinating, and he cries out to his father uh, often during the song. But um, things don't go very well. At the very close, the next to last line is, he reaches the homestead with desperate effort. And so reaching the homestead, of course, the father is going to have the horse stop and then the last line is, in seine Marmon das Kind war tot. But in his arms, the child was dead. So the child loses his battle with the Earl King. But Schubert realizes that there's all these different people that the vocalist is going to have to portray. So Schubert paints each of the different characters with a different segment of the singer's range. The narrator who begins and ends the song is right in the heart of the singer's range. The father is low, very soothing. The son is very high, very anxious. And then the Earl King, when, it, when he speaks, uses the full range and also for the most part is singing in a major key where the other three are singing in a minor. So I would like for you to listen to a couple of different recordings of the Earl King, and I've included several different uh, possibilities for you on your listening list. You might want to find a translation and try to follow along with it as well. What is the piano part doing? What do you hear? The piano is mimicking the galloping of the horse. So we first hear from the horse, and the horse gallops all the way up to that next to last line when he reaches the homestead with desperate effort. So that final line, um, but in his arms a child was dead, is sung like a recitative, almost completely a cappella, just with a couple of chords to keep the singer in the correct tonality. So it's perfect storm und drang or storm and stress where the rug is pulled out from under you. The poet, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Goethe is the idolized poet of the day, he's kind of the Beethoven of the literary world. Goethe was a true Renaissance man who dabbled in um, a lot of different areas such as science and uh, certain ideas that preempted the concepts of Darwin's evolution theory. But he was a wonderful writer and in his Faust, in his poetry writings, 
they influence the composer's grade. And it's when some of these wonderful composers meet the text of such a great writer that things really spark and come to life. So I hope you enjoy listening to the Earl King. Later on, um, the next lecture will be about the continuation of the German art song tradition. We'll be talking about Robert and Clara Schumann and Johannes Brahms. Thank you.